Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. If you've been watching TV today, you know that thousands of children walked out of school across America demanding the passage of new gun control laws as follows the mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, of course. The walkout is being hailed by a ruling class as an act of moral bravery, but of course students do not act independently, brave as they may be. They can't act independently. They're under the control of adults, in this case, by definition, they're in school. So when you hear 16-year-olds scream, hey, NRA, how many people did you kill today? You can guess about whether they know what they're saying or whether they really believe it. Some of them do. But you can be certain adults are behind it. And they are. Today's events were organized by the Women's March with the support of dozens of other groups, from Michael Bloomberg's gun lobby to Planned Parenthood. Celebrities, journalists, political elites across the country cheered them on. The TV channel Nickelodeon went dark for 17 minutes to show support for, quote, kids leading the way. In New York City, a student die-in was joined by the governor of the state, Andrew Cuomo. In Baltimore, that city spent more than 100 grand in taxpayer money to transport students to anti-gun rallies. This in a city with one of the highest murder rates in the nation, a city that cannot afford trash cans or street lights. Meanwhile, in Alexandria, Virginia, 65 students walked out of an elementary school, as if kids under 10 can go anywhere by themselves. Now, whether you like the kids or like what they're saying, and you may, but you should be opposed to this because kids should not be used to advance political agendas, anyone's. Why? Because they're children. They're not old enough to have the perspective that adults do. That's why we don't let them vote or drink, or if today's protesters have their way, buy guns. And so it's wrong to exploit them, which, by the way, is exactly what is being done to them today, what the left is doing and has always done, from Mao's Red Guards to right now. The ANC in South Africa used kids as political props in the 80s. Their cause was obviously morally defensible. Causes usually are morally defensible. But in the process, an entire generation of kids learned to believe that activism is more important than learning, and a lot of them regret it now. They were exploited, and they're being exploited here. No matter what they chant, remember that the enemy of the adults behind this isn't the NRA. It's anyone who opposes their broader agenda. That's mostly people who have no power at all. So the message from our elites is really simple. Stand against us, and you're against children, and therefore you're a monster. And if you're a monster, you deserve to be destroyed. It's a kind of moral blackmail. Igor Volsky is director of Guns Down America. He joins us tonight. Igor, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So um, my complaint is not that people disagree with me on the Second Amendment. I think that's totally legitimate, and I think it's fair to have a debate on I mean, on I this. probably agree with you, actually, but... Well, maybe you do. Maybe yeah. you do. My first problem is the use of children to make a political point. So would you, for example, I know you supported what happened today, have a problem if these kids were being driven by their teachers in buses to, a, to an NRA rally? or if they were rallying against transgender bathrooms, the March for Biology. How would you feel about that? Well, you know what I love to see? I love to see students who are out there engaging in the democratic process, students who are doing really what teachers want them to do, what teachers teach them to do, and that is take part in critical thinking, find something they believe in, and fight for it. I mean, you saw the students well, in the no days... There's no critical thinking here. There's no but critical... you didn't answer my question, which is if they were being taken to pro-life marches or anti-gay marriage marches or something you disagree well, with just by disagree teachers. I disagree with your premise. I don't think... No, but how would you feel? Yeah. Would you say that's totally cool? That, that's my, I mean, my question. Anyway, is really in your simple. hypothetical question of yes. do I think students should be taken against their will somewhere no, to no, do no, something? No, no. If I teachers, don't. I don't care if, what it is. If teachers were abetting a march, if teachers across the country were saying to kids, let me help you get to a march that represented something that you found morally repugnant, would you be supportive on principle? Would you say this is them engaging in the democratic process? For guns, for I example. I mean, if your premise is should students be taken somewhere by teachers where they don't want to go? No. I agree My with you that shouldn't happen. Would you be for I'm it saying if you didn't agree with it? students want to do this. I mean, you heard the students after the shooting. You heard what the students said. They believe this in their gut. And the reason is, Tucker, is because they've experienced these bullets. They've heard these bullets. They've buried their classmates. I'm That's not, why they're doing this. Nobody's forcing no, no, them what you're to doing, engage in this. You're, and I'm not saying, saying that. Uh, kids who are under the care of a teacher who has control of their grades in life are not free agents. They can't act fully independently as you and I can because they are under the control of an authority figure. This is really simple. This is why teachers aren't allowed to have sex with students because they're in power and the kids aren't. So why are teachers allowed to direct kids toward a political ideology? It's really simple. Because the teachers are not directing students to anything. This is student-led. This is the power of this movement, of this moment, is that we're now in a situation where students are saying, enough is enough from the lawmakers who don't want to change the gun laws, enough is enough from the NRA who wants to just...
push our guns everywhere agenda and for everyone agenda. We are gonna push for change. That's what they're doing. That's what's really inspiring about all of this. But I mean, if I could just make an obvious, almost technical point, which is that kids can't vote. Kids of the age of most of these students, 16-year-olds, can't vote. So they're actually not in the democratic process. And we've agreed that they shouldn't be in the democratic process. We've agreed that until they can make rational decisions, they can't vote. And by the way, you don't want them to buy guns. So if they're too young to buy guns, why should they be making my gun laws? But you know who wants them no, no, to buy guns? The NRA. The NRA specifically cares about the NRA. Well, I'm asking you what you think. And sh why should people who don't have the right to buy guns have the right to make my gun laws? It's a simple question. What's I mean, they're not they are not making your gun laws. They're the law making them. The, yeah, and as citizens in this country, they're allowed they're to influence citizens. the democracy. They're children. They're not, they're not of 18. They're Americans, Look. but they don't have the full rights of citizenship because they're not adults. They can't drink alcohol. They, a lot of them can't drive cars. You don't want them to buy guns, and they Tucker, can't vote. My, I mean, my, is there a difference between an adult and a child? I mean, of course. Okay, then why my, don't you the acknowledge point, that then? Well, of course there's a difference. My point point is they've been placed in this situation where their lives are in danger in American schools and the reason is is because of decisions a hold up that lawmakers made and b because of the agenda of the NRA that wants to put even more guns can into their you, classrooms can I ask and you a I think it's okay for them and I think it's in fact noble for them to I, say I get it cuz you like it but if they this. were going out if one of their teachers some scary alt right person was taking him to a Milo rally you would freak Look, out I'm, as you I, know and you know no, just admit it, and let's just be honest with each other. Really. Look, if there were 50,000 kids Tucker. going to a Milo Yiannopoulos rally right now, taken by their teachers from Fort Worth, you would say this but is the Tucker, end of America. The students aren't doing this because going to uh, Milo rallies because that's not what they believe. Oh, they it's not. Believe they, no, they believe this. what you believe. And all the hold, up, you, hold up, Tucker. You they had, believe what progressive had, adults believe. Tucker, you had students bury their friends. I agree. You had students lose friends, you and that happens please, all across please, the country. The theatrics pull back. No, no, it's I'm not aware theatrics, of it. It Tucker. Is. I don't it understand is. what you're dismissing. I'm not in any way dismissing. What by you're saying the, the adults told them what to do this. What you're doing is engaging in the classic moral blackmail techniques of the left, which is rather than make a rational case, you point to children and say, if you oppose what I believe, you're against no, them. No, no, here's my this rational case. So let me ask you a rational question. You have sent a number of tweets out recently saying the cops are racist. They kill a disproportionately high number of African Americans. Because yeah, I can, look, I'm not attacking you for that. I don't tweet about that. Racism plus police brutality plus guns equals Alton Sterling, Philando well, Castile, etc. Are you? Are you? I'm not attacking you. I'm not. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. It's a predicate okay, to a okay, question, which is this: If you believe that the police have a problem with racist violence, why do you want the police to be the only people to have guns? It's a simple question. Well, I don't want the police to be the only people to have guns. I want I want to move us to a country where we where we have fewer guns and where we don't have assault weapons and where we don't have assault weapons that can kill large would numbers of people. Would the cops have police? No, that would doesn't assault, mean we need. Criminal. No, hold on. Wait, the, the cops that you've described as racist would they have assault weapons? Tucker, I'm no, not I'm, I'm asking a sincere question. Why are you in I am arguing that racism plays a role in the disproportionate murder of young black men. Right. And I don't That's know why you're not more, why you're so trusting of police you say are killing people That's, out of animals. You no, know that's not what I'm saying. Look, I want to have a I want to have a We're serious conversation. Right. I'm trying to have a serious conversation. I'm you're trying. telling me I'm I mean, dismissing the children. <laughs> you are dismissing well, the children. You're laughing at you just I have four at the children. children. I'm not dismissing the children. You're dismissing me. these children. Of course I'm not. Well, I think you are. Numerous top Democrats went out of their way to pander during today's protest. Watch. We need laws, not nice thoughts and prayers. Yeah. The NRA has made me public enemy number one, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. Are you going to vote out of office the people who take the gun lobby money and put your safety at risk? The NRA has held Congress hostage for years now. These young people have shown up to spring us free. We need a vote now. We need a vote now. We need a vote now. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent and a contributor to NRA TV, and he joins us tonight. Hey, Dan, so what do you make of this? What do you make of this march? Well, a 
couple things are going on here, and your prior guest did it, Nancy Pelosi just did it, and a number of those politicians taking advantage of those kids at a rally I thought was designed to reduce targeted school violence, not to pass legislative items on the Democrat agenda. But, you know, shame on us for bringing it up, Tucker. We're the ones who are dismissing the kids, according to the left. But he did two things, your prior guest, which is interesting here. First, he did the appeal to emotion where they talk about emotion as if emotion is reason in this case. Of course we all feel horrible about what happened in Parkland. That the, the point stipulated. There, there's no dispute there. But what he does is he confuses the emotion surrounding the situation with reason and reasonable measures that going forward would reduce school violence. But he did something else that I found particularly disturbing, and they do it too. The liberals do this all the time. They do this utopian fallacy thing where they say things that are clearly nonsensical designed to make you look foolish. What they do is they say things like, well, we all want fewer guns in schools. Of, of course we do. But you don't get to pick that. The darn bad guy does, Tucker. The bad guy walks. You well, think the course. bad guy walks in there in the school and he goes, oh, listen, there's a sign up that says we want fewer guns in schools. Let me turn around. We don't live in utopia. We don't live in a perfect world. And it's really infuriating having a debate with people who constantly engage in these silly tactics, never want to get anything reasonable done. Yes. And they do this strictly to make you look silly. So how would you feel if your child's teacher were proselytizing about a very specific political view and then took him out of school, put him on a bus, and brought him to a political rally? Wouldn't you have a right to be outraged since that's not why you're sending him to school? Uh, I'd, outrage? I'd be pretty pissed, Tucker. Uh, I send my yeah. kids to school to learn, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I don't expect political indoctrination. Now, I, I don't, listen, if a teacher has a political opinion, and it's happened to me before, I've lived in a couple liberal states, I, unlike a lot of liberals, encourage my daughters to go back to school and make their case and make it in a reasonable fashion. And you know what? If the teacher gives them a bad grade because of it, we can go fight that fight. But that's what reasonable people do. They don't encourage kids to walk out of school during the middle of the day I mean, you know what kept occurring to me today? What happened? God forbid one of these kids walking out of school was hit by a car or something like that. I yeah. don't send my kids to school to engage in a political protest. Come on. No, and you ought to pull your kids out immediately if they are exploited in the way these kids are being, in my opinion. You ought to pull them out anyway. Uh, it's a joke. Dan, thank you. Great to see you. Yes, sir. Well, the press were almost unanimous in their positive, fawning, uncritical coverage of today's walkouts. Here's a selection. I'm already choked up thinking it's kids. It's kids leading the nation, begging for school safety because the adults have failed them. The power of these young people, the decisions they make, they cannot be bought. They are fearless. It's pretty incredible to see these students of all different ages, some as young as 14 to 13 years old, having a strong opinion, not wanting to be underestimated uh, about what they have to say. So we're expecting a lot of very visual, very powerful moments here in the nation's capital as students across the nation, Stephanie, say enough. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill and has to watch that crap all day long. We're hiring only dumb people in TV news, I noticed. When did that happen? Did an order go out that only totally non-skeptical, low IQ people get microphones now? Is that new? Uh, well, look, uh, Tucker, reporter's jobs, and, and Stephanie Rule, for instance, was in the first two sound bites you had there, and, and she's an, an anchor. She's not a pundit. And right. they're, simply, they're there to simply report. And I, I go back to the movie Broadcast News, and I don't know if you remember, it's from 19, the late 1980s, and William Hurt is this hotshot anchor. And at the end of this report where they're talking about an event where they avoided tragedy, he says, in other words, I think we're all going to be okay now. And this curmudgeon producer, station chief, back in the control room looks up at the monitor and says, who the hell cares what you think? And that's gone completely away now because we're, we're having okay. we're having anchors inject opinion and emotion I think into that about these myself instead day. of letting the pictures who tell cares? the story. You know, I agree, but I, I guess what cut look for uh, issues like this gun control, abortion, the social issues, the press has always been completely on one side, but I've never seen entire TV networks devote their coverage basically as an in-kind contribution to the marches, which is what happened today. I mean, a line definitely has been crossed. This wasn't this way two years ago. 
Oh, no, this is activism in, in many quarters at this point, and it is taking a side. Uh, I did see uh, one, or here anyway, uh, one interview today that didn't get a lot of play, and it because it, it came from a different perspective, and it came from somebody who's a very famous person, one of the great NBA players of all time, went to a police academy after he retired and became an unofficial uh, deputy, and his name is Shaquille O'Neal, and here's what he told WABC Radio in New York. He said, quote, the government should give law enforcement more money. Give more money, you recruit more people. And the guys that are not ready to go onto the streets, you put them in front of schools. You put them behind schools. You put them inside of schools. Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, goes on to argue that banning guns simply is not something that will work alone because, A, there's 300 million of them out there. And yeah, this no, is the type of solution that, that deserves many, many different ideas being brought forward. And instead, what we're seeing now is a media pushing one idea forward, which is if you ban guns, you solve the problem. And this is much more comprehensive than that, Tucker. So I saw some, I mean, by the way, if we're going to ban guns, we should start with the bodyguards at network news divisions. You know what I mean? Let's kind of spread the pain around here a little bit. It shouldn't just be widows in West Texas who have to give up their protection. It should be nightly news anchors. Um, Viacom shut down its programming entirely and went black. I've never seen a channel turn down advertising dollars. That's how strongly they felt about this. Oh, yeah, I wrote about this earlier this morning. Actually, Viacom is a media company, and they own several networks, uh, cable networks anyway, whether that be a black entertainment network uh, or uh, whether it be also Comedy Central, uh, whether it be Nickelodeon, MTV, for 17 minutes at 10 a.m., 17 being the number of people that were killed, of course, in Parkland. Uh, they, they ceased all regular programming, and in Nickelodeon's case, they said, you know, we're, we're, we're shutting down uh, because the kids are leading and, and we're here to support them. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what they said. And again, yeah. that's that's advocacy, that's activism. You could agree or disagree with it. Uh, but at the same time, this was an unprecedented event that we saw uh, via Viacom this morning. Yeah, it's also cheap moral preening. And if they really cared, they'd pay the college scholarships of everybody at, at Parkland. Uh, but I don't think they will somehow. Joe, great to see you.